parameters subject to these constraints, and it'll fill in these parameters. Okay, so the Avalon analysis is cool. It works for these things on the board. If I go to look to apply it to a perching airplane, even a pendulum, then the math gets really hard really fast. And in, in practice, people haven't used the Avalon analysis enough for nonlinear dynamic robots because it's hard to conjure the Avalon function. These tools fill a possible a perceived gap in the ability to automatically generate the Avalon functions for these systems. Okay, um, just to, you know. So you understand that it's fast and good. Let me just run a quick example, right? So this is where the tools are basically to the point where um, I just type in now, I say, here's my dynamics, x dot equals negative x plus x cubed. Uh, what's the region of attraction for it? And they run, you know, run really quickly. So this is just basically instantaneous. It says, yeah, the region of attraction is, it had, this is the, this is the, the, the output function that it generated, which is the same one I used on the board, x squared. The, the row is just a, a telling you it stops at one. <coughs> um, but so that's cool. So that's a trivial example. We could do that on the board. I can do it for pretty complicated examples too, pretty fast. So if I run, for instance, a quad rotor, and I take a, a, a dynamic model of a quad rotor and ask what's its region. I'm going to stabilize it with a linear quadratic regulator and ask what's re, what's its region of attraction. I'll do that here real quick too. Most of the time, it spends actually generating. Plot, but this is the region of attraction of the quad rotor with saturation constraints, and which is just these, you know, sense of the dynamics. It's going to just simulate the dynamics a few times. But that ellipse was a plane of the six dimensional, it was just a cross section of a six dimensional construction, which was the level set of a Lyapunov function that you wrote for that system very quickly. Okay? So I think they're good tools. I think they're, they're useful tools. Um, they work well. Uh, we had, so the, those tools grew up in, in systems theory. And Paulo Barrios at MIT, he did a lot of the initial connections between uh, social squares optimization and systems theory. Um, you know, we've come in and, and made them work for robotics, basically. That's sort of my, what I feel like my role has been. So uh, you know, we do it, we extend them, for instance, to work for uh, funnels around trajectories. I'll tell you that story graphically. We, we do them with higher order of the up functions. We have to up to quart, quadratic or quartic. Um, so uh, we can do it with saturations and state constraints, obstacles, motor saturations. Uh, the robustness analysis is pretty straightforward with these. We, we, you know, if you have uncertainty in your in the dynamics of your system, I don't know if my mass of my quadrator is 1.5 or, or 2.5. I can do that. If you do it uh, with sines and cosines, you can do it directly in trigonometric. Um, I'm really proud of the ability. We can do it now for hybrid dynamics and for limit cycles. 